hello up there in YouTube land. So today I am doing a review on something pretty unique. Uh, I'm just going to jump right in and tell you what it is. It is this, the Iskarama 54 non-MC 1.5 times anamorphic adapter. This thing is a beast in all the best ways and I love it. I'm shooting everything with this at the moment. All the footage you'll see here is from projects I filmed and directed with this lens, uh, with the DZO Vespid Primes as my taking lenses. Uh, so let's dive in and find out what this is all about. When I go to buy a new product, just like all of you, I'm sure you jump on YouTube, you jump on Google, you try to read about it as much as you can, you try to watch as many reviews on it as you can. I'm doing a review on this because before I bought this, the only review I could find was Anamorphic on a Budget, which I actually have up here. This is a photo of their adapter. These are their basic specs of this adapter. Uh, I used all this before I bought this and even their footage was fine. I'm pretty sure it's the first video they ever made on their channel. I couldn't find anyone else putting up decent footage besides like videos of cats and ducks and lakes and where are all the... I know there are filmmakers out there using these adapters get your asses on YouTube and show us some of your footage with the non multi non multi coated version oh, that's a hard thing to say this one has the most characteristics this one has the most anamorphic feel of both these adapters it is a 1.5 times anamorphic de-squeeze. Now, technically it's a 1.42. I have shot projects where I de-squeeze to 1.5 and the image is totally fine. Um, if you wanna go 1.42, you can also do that. Pretty much anywhere in between there will give you a pretty natural looking image. Most people won't be able to tell that it might be de-squeezed a little bit too much. Um, focus throw is 180 degrees, or maybe just a little bit beyond. Filter thread on the front, it is 95 millimeter, so it's quite large. 95 millimeter diopters are pretty cheap and easy to find these days, which is great news because this adapter has a minimum focus of two meters, which is the biggest downside to this adapter. But I have a 0.5 a times one and a times two diopter, and that covers me for everything I could need when I'm using this. It has a huge 77 millimeter rear thread. This is what allows me to use it on my DZO Vespid primes. Uh, as you can see, the rear element protrudes quite a bit. So I have a 12 millimeter adapter. This seems to be about 11 millimeters. So my 12 millimeter adapter allows me to mount this on anything that has a fairly close front element. Um, has beautiful, smooth focus. I did get this cleaned and re-oiled at Duclo, Duclo, Duclo lens here in LA. They were fantastic. They took care of this and now it looks and feels like brand new. It has a locking ring here for alignment. I don't know if you can see that in the video. It allows me to spin this and then I let go and the thing locks. Um, it is fantastic. So I've used, oh, I said that a bit weird, didn't I? Fantastic. It's fantastic. I've used a bunch of anamorphic adapters and a bunch of anamorphic lenses. I've used a mix of everything over the last five-ish years since living here in LA. This, I'm gonna say, this is the granddaddy of all lenses. It came out in the 70s. I looked up my serial number. I think this one's from 1979-ish. Um, every adapter I've used feels like it's trying to imitate this adapter. Uh, to be honest, I would have used other adapters that are around on the market right now that are a little bit cheaper. Uh, I mainly got this because of the 77 millimeter rear thread, which makes this super adaptable to so many different types of taking lenses that for me, this one was a no brainer. I just love having a good anamorphic adapter. It just means any glass that I have or I want to hire, or I want to use, and I love those characteristics, I can have those characteristics plus make them anamorphic, which is pretty freaking cool. Um, so the image from this, 
Let's break it down. So what do we want? What are our typical anamorphic traits, right? We want the flare. So the this is the non-multi coded version, by the way, which is super special. There are a lot of coded versions of these, and the coded versions get rid of all the lens flares, which blows my mind. Why do you want anamorphic and no lens flares? Uh, so this is non-coded, which is freaking beautiful because the flares have a beautiful organic amber color to them i think because it's only a single coating on this lens you can see it when you turn it in the light that it's got a bit of an amber sheen to it but it's also it also flares a bit color specific if i hit it with the green light it flares green if i hit it with the blue light it flares blue purple pink whatever the this adapter creates the most beautiful flares i've ever seen from any adapter there's also quite a bit of chromatic aberration, which I'm fine with. I love a dirty frame. I love a dirty lens, depending on the project, but I typically go dirtier over cleaner. I just like character. Distracted myself there, dirty. Everyone likes a bit of a dirty, dirty frame. Um, sharp in the middle. Chromatic aberration is present. I mean, this is a pretty old lens. I feel like there's a lot of tech now that helps remove chromatic aberration, but when you're stepping into the world of anamorphic, chromatic aberration is gonna be part of it anyway. And I, I think there's a, there's a flavor to anamorphic that allows chromatic aberration to run rampant a little bit and it still works. It still just works. I don't mind the chromatic aberration on this. If I look at the image from this, I go, one, it's anamorphic. To everything out of focus just looks lush and so painterly and so like I say shredded. It grabs the background and it just rips it in this kind of organic, natural way. It's almost like you could touch the image. Um, sharp in the center, not so sharp near the edges. Now, to the point where you can't really use the edges. I wouldn't have, I wouldn't shoot too wide and have my actors standing side of frame. I mean, I could get away with it. I could get away with it, but are they going to be sharp? No. Are they going to be free of chromatic aberration? No. Can the scene still look great? And if the writing's awesome, will it still be a really good scene? Yes. So it doesn't matter that much. Um, online, it's saying, oh, another couple of stats for you. It says a 40 millimeter coverage on a wide angle lens. I'm not finding that to be true. I'm filming this on the new 6K Cinema which is full frame. Uh, I also have a 12K Pro, which I have converted to full frame with an internal uh, uh, speed booster. I can't get wider than a 50 mil. Even on my vintage lenses, I can't get wider than 50. So I'm not sure why people are saying 40 mil. Maybe they're on some sensors that aren't quite full frame. Um, it's pretty heavy. I'm Australian. I live in LA, but I'm going to say 900 grams or one kilogram. I'll have pounds pop up on the bottom of the screen here just for everyone in america so i say everyone else but just you in america it is 11.5 centimeters long it is heavy it's a full metal construction this thing is entirely entirely metal it's quite pretty the metal here is black the metal at the back is black and the metal here is a very 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 dark blue the light from my computer screen is actually making it pretty evident during the day it's harder to see but yeah, this bit here is a beautiful dark blue. So dark it looks black. Uh, the gear I got for Follow Focus gears, I put it on myself because I, I need to be able to put a motor on this thing. Uh, it's a single focus, so you put your taking lens to infinity and you focus with this. I think I already mentioned this. Everything you're seeing during me talking about this, I filmed with this. The projects I filmed, directed and edited um, on my Vespids. I've also whacked it on my DZO Cata Ace 35 to 80. Uh, again, it works from 50, pretty much bang on 50. If I allow it to vignette, I can get down to 45 and I can punch in, but then what's the point in shooting at 45 and punching in? Um, I don't know, 50 to be safe. 50 and up. It gets real soft on anything above 100. I had a, I have the 125 DZO. It starts to get a little bit soft even in the center. So 100 mil down to 50 mil, you, you're Spot on, you're totally fine using this. Like I said, the most anamorphic of anamorphic characteristics I've ever seen from an adapter. It is absolutely stunning. Uh, 95 mil on the front, 77 mil on the back. So the taking lenses you can use are endless. This is the new version I have up here from Schneider. I don't know how to say this size. Like. Kruzenach, 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 German. Whoever rehoused this lens, you can now buy a modern version. The optics are all the same. 
they've uh, put a new housing around this and as far as I know you can only get a multi-coded version so this is hyper rare because even the new version of this has the coded optics talking about being non-coded that means the contrast is a little bit lower than you would typically get uh, from something like a newer adapter and the color is a lot uh, it's a lot more natural everything I film using this I love love what it does to the contrast and the color I'm shooting on black magic so your your results may vary depending on what sensor you're using but I just love how this slightly desaturates everything pulls a tiny bit of contrast out of everything it makes everything very natural very organic these are two words you've heard way too much when watching youtube videos on reviews for products big adapter it's a bit heavy but it is the most true to anamorphic looking image from any anamorphic adapter i've ever used massive rear threads you can use it on almost any lens you encounter get yourself a 12 to 11 mil spacer at the back then close elements on your taking lens isn't an issue whatsoever um if you enjoyed this review on me just talking about this adapter i don't really know how much of a reviewer was uh give it a like subscribe i never i use youtube just to host my content for my website and my company so if you guys like and you want to see more of this aussie guy talking about products in la and my production company and me making films and all that kind of stuff subscribe like comment if you have or have used one of these let me know let me know in the comments down below i want to know how many of these are out in the wild this one is like immaculate this is in mint condition i love it but yeah the iskarama 54 non-multi-coded 1.5 times anamorphic adapter if you've used one what do you think i love it I think it has the best image of any anamorphic adapter. True to anamorphic, true to real anamorphic that I have ever used. Um, if you like a dirty image, use this. I've been using, this sounds like a wrap up and that was the wrap up. I'm gonna step back for a second. I've been using my lenses wide open. So these vestments go to 2.1. I'm trying to get 2.1 in my anamorphic. I want, I want depth. I want shallow, shallow depth. I've closed down a couple of times and it does get cleaner as you close down. I haven't tested how clean it gets. Wide open, it's dirty, but it's dirty in the best way. The bokeh, uh, the background swirls, the background shredding, the oval bokeh, it looks so genuine. There's gonna be a little clip popping up right now of an actress shot her nice and close. Probably on a 75 or 100 and that bokeh in the background is nice and oval. Primary and secondary flares, so true to life. They look completely anamorphic. Some of the new adapters and some of the more budget anamorphic lenses get like a real pinchy, real thin anamorphic streak that doesn't look quite true to the thoroughbred anamorphic lenses. I'm gonna leave it there. Same as what I said before. If you like this review, subscribe, comment, check out my website at youngonestudio.com to see what we do. And um, I'll dig into my, my cupboard worth of gear and find other random magic things that I collect and I use on set. And I'll talk to you about them and hopefully you enjoy it. Thanks, guys. See ya.